Okay, my next guest is a lawyer who has an online blog called Legal Green Room, where she gives advice and writes on several legal and hot button topics. Mona Pars joins us via, via, via Life Skype to talk about some selfie related laws you may or may not know about. Welcome, Mona. How are you? Hello, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you could be with us here. So let's, let's get right to it. What is the New York selfie law tiger about? Tell me about that. Oh, I'm confused. yes, the tiger <laughs> selfie law. So this was actually in response to this whole phenomenon on Tinder. You know that whole dating app. Yeah. And there were a lot of young men that were posing in front of tigers and taking selfies and posting them online in an effort to look macho in front of the young ladies and young ladies if that worked i don't know but uh <laughs> new york legislators then passed this law that was uh put into effect just a couple months ago back in february that outlaws taking selfies in front of big cats so that can be tigers lions uh, jaguars mountain lions I uh, can't take these selfies at new york uh, animal traveling animal shows unless there is a physical permanent barrier between you two. And it was really in an effort not only to protect us, but to protect the animals themselves. You know, it's said that they're taken from their mothers when they're just cubs. They are reportedly uh, abused and drugged and their canines are removed and their claws are removed just in an effort to keep them, you know, calm uh, for close contact with us. So it was a protective measure for sure. Good. Well, so if I take a selfie of someone and I post it, do I, do I still own that picture or is it just? It, you, it is absolutely yours. You know, just because you're the owner of something and you're exercising your rights to then use uh, that product or that photo, you can do whatever you, whatever you want with it. You know, you can make you can put it on a t-shirt and sell it if you'd like, Geraldo. You can make a shrine of yourself if you'd like. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. It does not, just because you are exercising your rights, doesn't then give someone else to use it uh, without your permission. All right, so does it, can somebody else use it then? Does it give somebody freedom to use it? Or? There are, I mean, there are certain exceptions. There's one huge exception under the law. It's called fair use, and it's a very complicated doctrine. Mm -hmm. And the court will look to someone's use of uh, your, your goods and your product and your creativity in a case-by-case -case basis. Usually the court will look to four factors. Uh, first, they'll look to the type of use. So if that person's use without your permission right. was more so for a commercial profit as opposed to an educational nonprofit use, mm -hmm. then it'll likely not be okay. Uh, the court would also look to the type of thing that it was in the first place. So was it more of a creative work or was it more of a factual, uh, something that was of benefit to the public? If it was more creative, the court would want to protect the creator and will not allow that to be fair. Uh, a court would also look to a third factor, which is how much of the original work was used. So if a huge substantial portion of it was used, then it'll likely not be okay. If it was just a snippet, you'll be, you'll be able to fly on that one. Uh, another factor that a court would look to is the effect on the value of the, of the goods. So if, for example, someone was writing a book review and they revealed the book's hook, that will, you know, I don't know if anyone would want to book, write, read that book anymore. So right. it'll definitely affect book sales. So, uh, you know, in the case of selfies, let's say someone took your selfie and just changed the filtering, changed the color, snapped on a quote on that uh, photo. They're really kind of creating a whole new work. So the court might find that to be okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about selfies and driving. I know there's some some issues there. Can you explain that a little bit better for us? Or Yeah, so, uh, you know, this is a huge problem. If you look, it's estimated that there are about 40 million Instagram photos with people using the hashtag driving while work, driving selfie. So it's a huge right. problem. And I'm not qualified to speak outside of California, but if you were to just ask my opinion on it and, uh, you know, without relying on, le on uh, legal advice, we were to talk about the state specifically in your area, Araldo. Uh, it's really different. Each state will will word their laws differently. In New York, though, they are very specific. New York says that you cannot take photos and send them while driving. It's very clear. Uh, Delaware, Delaware isn't as clear on their law, but they do say that you can't look at a photo while driving. And if you're going to take a selfie. You are usually going to be looking at that thing before you send it, so it'll likely not be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in New Jersey, New Jersey actually has one of the toughest cell phone laws yeah, that uh, I know. while driving in, <laughs> in the nation, it said. So you just don't want to mess with New York or with New Jersey. And then if you look at Pennsylvania, theirs also isn't very clear, but really it just 
comes down to the point of you do not want to do it. There was actually a study done. I don't know if you know this, Geraldo, or if your viewers know, but there was a study done by the Ford Motor Company, and they said that distracted or taking a selfie will distract you while driving for 14 to 20 seconds. Okay. And then when you couple that with the study that was done by the state of New York, right. they said that distracted driving for just two seconds will double your risk of a car crash or a near crash. So it's just something that you don't want to do. And even in that case, uh, Araldo, even if your state's law isn't very explicit on it, uh -huh. you don't want to go there because there are other laws that you can uh, be liable under. You know, some states have distracted driving laws that uh, aren't necessarily just limited to cell phone use. It could be shaving, it could be putting your makeup on, it could be tending to your pet in the car. So uh, there's other ways of being held liable that you just don't wanna, don't wanna go there. Beautiful, well listen Mona, we have about 10 seconds or so left. Just quickly tell me a website when people can get a hold of you or get more information from you. Yes, absolutely, legalgreenroom.com. We have all our blogs and webisodes on there. Definitely check us out. All right, well thanks for being with us Mona and I hope to be talking to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. And still to come, summer is soon here, which means it's time to leather up with the sunscreen. But don't forget your lips, too. Ahead, we find out how to help prevent those nasty summer cold sores when Healthy Lifestyle with Aldo returns in a moment.